Robin Hood Radio presents Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willems. Michelle is a longtime journalist and herself is a published playwright of several theatrical works. She's a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post, Daily Beast, and the Atlantic websites. Another of another show. Well, it is still a tentative and tender time right now. Shows in rehearsals, looking for a healthy spring, which I think is going to happen. And as for those shows that bravely paused, well, they're claiming they'll be back. Well, let's see. Mrs. Doubtfire, the Broadway musical which closed temporarily when Omicron took charge, announced that it would postpone its reopening until April 14th now. That's a month later than anticipated to give the Academy a bit more time to rebound. Fingers crossed. The good news is that it looks like the virus is calming down, but there are still a lot of unknowns, said the show's lead producer. It was just clear that April was a better time to open, given the trends with tourism, thinking about when families and groups will start to feel comfortable. Well, those are good thoughts. Mrs. Doubtfire is a rather exhausting, but clearly a family show, as I said when I reviewed it here. So now switching coast for a moment, I stayed in Los Angeles a few days extra to see Brian Cranston on stage. Now, I had seen his two Tony award-winning performances on Broadway, and now he's at the Intimate Geffen Playhouse, starring in a relatively new play with a very poor title called Power of Sale, S-A-I-L. It's written by Paul Grillong, and it focuses on an arrogant, ambitious Harvard professor. Of course I want to meet Rachel Maddow, he says. Here he is caught in the middle of the free speech movement, or as he says, the answer to hate speech is more speech. So he has deigned to invite a white supremacist, who we never meet, to speak on campus. Well, all hell breaks out. I don't know how it could look worse, worries the public relations-oriented dean. Well, it does get worse, and there is a personal reveal that I certainly won't reveal here. The cast of Seven is fine. It also includes TV star Amy Brenneman. And their characters all turned out to be a bit more different than you would think up front. Power of Sale, yes, there is symbolic meaning to the title, but, well, not enough. It's an hour 45 minutes with no intermission. It feels too long, and the structure is a bit confusing. It could move more rapidly, more, dare I say, like an episodic TV show. But there is food for thought here, and seeing Brian Cranston up close and personal is always a privilege. I will say that the local critic gave it a blistering review, so it will be interesting to see the impact of that. Now, before I leave this coast, I might also mention that L.A.'s theater scene, as I've said before, is nothing to scoff at. In fact, go to play, PasadenaPlayhouse.org, and you can stream its latest well-received offering called Teenage Dick about which one critic writes, Teenage Dick's Dick does something more important than build sympathy for a character with a disability. Richard's condition is humanized, but his behavior is unconstrained. That one is on demand through February 27th, as in one more week. Again, that's PasadenaPlayhouse.org. Meanwhile, back on my usual coast, artists who live in New York State and, that, and can demonstrate financial need are being invited to apply for assistance as part of a new $125 million initiative called Creatives Rebuild New York that is being supported by several major foundations. This new initiative, which will provide monthly stipends for 2,400 New York artists and jobs to another 300, is the latest in a series of efforts around the country to give guaranteed income to those who create for a living. The idea obviously gained support during the pandemic. It sounds hopeful as is this announcement from your neck of the woods from February 24th to March 13th, live on the Boyd Quinson stage in Pittsfield, comes 10-minute plays times 10-minute playwrights equals 100 minutes of pure joy. I guess that's the title. That's uh, effective through February 24th. Patrons must be fully vaccinated and boosted. All performances will have socially distanced seating two empty seats between every party, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, those are always fun to hear the words of the writers of the future. Now, back in New York, don't forget about the Mint Theater Company's The Daughter-in-Law by D.H. Lawrence. That's running through March 20th. It is described as a tale of marriage strained by class conflict. The New York Times called it well-constructed, brutally intimate, and psychologically shrewd. 
Now that's live and in person, as are the offerings at Theater Row, Theater Row including one from another very fine company, the Keen, K-E-E-N. This is it, the Keen Company's 22nd season. The show is called This Space Between Us. Their stuff is always worth seeing. Again, that's in person at Theater Row. Also, you can check out the Gallery Players 25th Annual Black Box New Play Festival. That's online from February 24th to February 27th, 7.30 each night. That one is in person. Again, that's through galleryplayers.com. Speaking for myself, I have at least five shows in New York over the next two weeks, which I will be reporting on, including one from the New York Theater Workshop, one from the Public Theater, one from Manhattan Theater Club, and one from Theater for a New Audience, and one from Lincoln Center. In other words, Jill, I will be diving right in. And are you looking forward? You know, I am. I am. Um, yes. Have I, people stopped? The, the only thing, yeah, I only saw one show out here, of course, the whole time. And uh, I am looking forward. And I'll probably go to the ticket booth on uh, Sunday to see. I love doing that on Sundays or Wednesdays to see what, you know, maybe I'll get a seat for the Music Man. Since I miss that opening, you never know when you go to that booth, you know, what they're offering that day. Or you go to the box office itself and can often get a ticket. So, yeah, I am looking forward to getting back there and to seeing what it's like. I think it's still mask wearing, but um, people do you are think, if they're going to... Yeah, but as, as that phases out, do you think that that is going to affect the audience? Uh, I do. I do. I've talked to people who said, I just pray that they don't take away the mask mandate. Yes, I think that will hurt. And we've talked about this, the demo, the demographic that usually goes to Broadway shows. You know, they're a little more, they're older, uh, and they're a little more worried, let's say, but they can for afford the shows. Uh, you know, the off-Broadway shows obviously are much smaller theater and venues, but they're struggling, let's face it. Uh, but yeah, I, I am looking forward. You know, the Music Man, people bought those seats so long ago. Uh, but you never know. That's why I think it's a it's a safe time to go to those ticket booths or the box office and see what's available on any given day. You may be very surprised. I am looking forward to it, of course. You know, it's getting back in the old routine. Where am I going to eat tonight? Uh, who am I going to meet at the Joe Allen Bar tonight? Um, you know, it's all that stuff. <laughs> and, and Okay, and so now I am curious because I know that a lot of eaters and outers and Joe Allen barers are not wearing masks happily. Well, I will let you know. My daughter went there last week and sat at the bar. Uh, she didn't tell me that. But so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah, you, 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 but obviously, you and I yeah. talked to different people. But so I'm just curious. How does that, you know, are, are, do people just? I'm, 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 I'm just worried. I'm, uh, wondering how that, uh, you, you know, all coincides. Well, I think they've lifted. Uh, oh yeah. I think New York restaurants have lifted the inside mandate mask man it's certainly the outside one and i don't even know i guess some of the broadway you know i haven't been there in a couple months i guess some of those restaurants have put in outdoor seating i don't think joe allen has um and that's really the hangout um well it'll be interesting to see you know even if they say it's a mask mandate as soon as you're sitting down and eating and drinking they don't care so but yeah i know a lot of people who haven't eaten inside once in two years so um, they're not going to the theater anytime soon um, or, you know, the restaurants, but I am. Um, so, you know, to each his own, each his and her own and no judgments here. But um, uh, I'll tell you, for, in California, it's, it's everybody wore masks, certainly at the at the Geffen Playhouse. That was a mandate here. And, well, even in your the Great Barrington, they're saying, you know, they're seating people six seats apart or something. Right. I have. It, I haven't it, heard it, of that anywhere. Well, it's it at it, it, some point. Yeah, this is this is more speculative, but not not what I'm about to say. But how people are going to function at some point, people are going to realize that. Wait a second, you know, yeah. you can't a run a business that way, and b shouldn't have to, and that there are ma many places, many many places in the country where that isn't happening. So, Absolutely, you know, I, you know, like and as. To, as as people start moving about more, you are going to get more and more people in who are like, yeah, and like, why now here? So I'm I'm just yeah. I'm, I'm just sort of from an oversight looking, just 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 seeing how these two um, positions are going to 
evolve. Yeah, but it's very. It's going to be very interesting. Um, I haven't seen people when I've told them that I went to twenty shows in New York between September and December. First question is, did they seat you apart from other people? I said, not. No, they're not doing that. Now I guess they are in Great Barrington for, for something. Um, but no, I, I never had that at all. It was awfully mask wearing. You have to show vaccination, blah, blah, blah. And now maybe you have to show boosters. Uh, I don't know. I think some of them are demanding boosters as well. But well look, and, and, and in a lot of cases, that, that, that particular uh, requirement has been removed. Uh, it has. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's a question what? of whether people insist on uh, in, uh, applying it right. s separately. Yeah, and then it's be a bear, yeah. and that, that that that's what brings it into hey you know, you know I mean some some people are done I I what, one of the things that I have encountered just I, I you know I think it's like I, I can't quite I can't quite get over it but one of the things that I have encountered is you know any any time someone sneezes yeah right depending on the demographic if it's yeah. I, you know I'm sorry if it's sixty and up it's like yeah. is it COVID. Yeah. And even of if you course. say it isn't COVID, but the person has, you know, moves on to laryngitis or something, is it COVID? The same person, same time, same whatever. Is it COVID? Like a, as though it is Ebola. Right. And well, it's, it's just getting to a point where, um, it, again, the group that knows it isn't Ebola and the group that still thinks it's Ebola are going to have to coexist and, uh, you know, and, and, and hopefully let some business uh, uh you know, let, let some business be done. So that's, uh, yeah. that's, oh, I, the, I agree. Okay. It's the other side too. Everybody who sneezes immediately says, I promise I don't have COVID. Exactly. So. Well, like you have to, <laughs> but it's just, no. I know. Let's time just to bring keep... back George Carlin and his immune system bits. Right. By the way, Billy Crystal's coming to Broadway. I mean, a lot of, yeah. a lot of big names are coming to Broadway in April. I don't think it's March. They're in rehearsals. But April, so that's really the month we're all watching, I would say, for Broadway. But meanwhile, I have friends who are going to New York to see the music band from Los Angeles, from other places. So they seem ready and eager. So let's keep our fingers crossed, as we say every week. Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willens, produced in the studios of Robin Hood Radio, robinhoodradio.com.